Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of In the Circle. And I am so excited to have Julian join us. And Julian, when when I was stalking her online, she's a she's a transformational <laughs> transformational therapist. That's the word I'm going to use. But she's going to um, better explain that um, for us. But uh, Julian. Tell us about yourself. I mean, how, what was it like growing up for you? You have a unique name and I'm going to have you say it for our audience to hear. And I'm sure you have a unique background, um, you know, with our chat before, you know, you said you're from Uganda. So I'm so intrigued to, to get some background information about you and just bring us to where you are now, because it seems like you're doing a lot of powerful, amazing things. And we want to join you on that journey. So Thank go ahead, Julian, tell us about yourself. Thank you so much, Candace. So that that question is, is I mean, how much time do you have? <laughs> That's really the question. Hour, so, and and oh. I'm, I'm, I'm enthralled, so I'm, I'm listening. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, first of all, for inviting me onto your podcast. I'm definitely looking forward to the conversation. Uh, so my name, my last name is pronounced Chiganda. Uh, people also say Kiganda. Um, either one is fine. Um, but I was originally, I was born in East Africa, Uganda. Um, and came here at a very young age to the United States, currently live in the Washington, D.C. area. My entire immediate family is here, and I come from a large family. It's uh, <laughs> uh, nine of us, so wow. that's, of course, my parents, and then I have four sisters and two brothers, um, and then amongst us, we have 14 grandkids and great-grandkids. Wow. So, you know, family Let's gatherings see. are, are pretty live. Table. Yes, I was about to say family gatherings are pretty live, <laughs> but we always have, we have a great time. Um, and, you know, I, I grew up, my parents were actually um, very much proponents of teaching us our culture, our heritage as we grew up. We did fight the language piece some, uh, so I can speak some of my language. I probably, I probably understand it more than I speak it. Um, but I will say um, as a teenager, I think that's where I really started to find pride in my heritage because, you know, growing up as a, a young Black African, East African child um, in the U.S., especially in the, you know, the 80s, um, 90s, you you had a lot of, you know, it's not, it's not the Black Panther, Black pride that there is now, right? Yes. It was a lot of, and there still is a lot of misconceptions about what what Africa is really about, about the beauty and the breadth and the richness and the heritage of Africa and its people. Um, and so, you know, a lot of times I was actually embarrassed by my last name yeah. and, um, you know, was grew, grew up wishing, like I'm sure so many people, that my last name was Cosby or Jackson, you know, mm. who didn't want to be a Jackson, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, I mean, that was, you know, you're watching the Cosby's on TV. They're the perfect yeah. family. Um, and then, of course, the Jacksons, you know. Um, and I actually come from a very, you know, musically performance inclined family. Um, so there was definitely a lot of imitating the Jacksons as we grew up. <laughs> Especially with six. It's uh, so you have five siblings. I have six, six siblings. Six siblings. So it's yeah. seven total, yeah. including you. Yeah. Wow, that must yeah. have been very, um, very interesting. What, what do you think that you pulled from that? Because, you know, sometimes there's a smaller, you know, two siblings, and they may be fighting all the time. And mm -hmm. sometimes there's a larger group. And then, you know, they, they find that person within the sibling that is yeah. a good match for them, and they're closer together, or mm -hmm. you have that massive support. What, what it's like growing up with six yeah. siblings? Gosh, I tell you, I mean, now that I have my own 17 year old, uh, I give my parents so much credit. I don't know, to this day, I don't know how they did it with seven of us, God bless them. Um, but, uh, you know, growing up, of course, we were always fighting, always fighting. I, I think that's inevitable. I don't know any family that has siblings that have not fought in some way, shape or form, whether it's physical, whether it's arguing. I just think that's just, you know, part of growing up. Um, and the funny thing is now we're just closer than ever. I mean, mm. people see us all the time. We're together, you know, are, we pretty much raised all of our kids together. 
um, and in our culture, actually, um, we don't have a word for cousin. Mm. So every, like all of our kids, we've taught them to call each other. That's your brother. That's your sister. You know, and that's, that's just a cultural thing. Um, <clears throat> but you know, uh, the great thing is there was always somebody to fight with and there was always somebody to play with. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, it was always mm, <laughs> absolutely. So what do you think was the you know because you mentioned your parents took time to ensure that you understand your culture, that you understand mm -hmm. your history. How do you think that impacted you as you're going through that time frame where you you know where you wish you were a Cosby or you wish you mm -hmm. were a Jackson? How 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 did that kind of help you through, and and how is that um, probably grounding you even now? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so I would say I probably did not appreciate those efforts mm -hmm. <laughs> until I was in my teens. Mm -hmm. um, and what happened was we had this amazing artist. Her name is Namu Luanga. Uh, she was a top tier performing artist in Uganda, very well known, danced with the top performing arts group in Uganda. <clears throat> and then she moved here to teach us all of our traditional dances, our music, to play these instruments. And we were part of a performing arts group from, gosh, starting in, I think it was 1989, 1990. Yeah. And in learning the hair, like just the richness of our culture. I mean, we got a chance to um, just travel all over the country wow. as well as the Caribbean teaching and sharing our East African heritage and culture. So, you know, we got to perform places like the World Bank, the Kennedy Center, Annenberg Center for the Arts. I mean, you name it, all these MIT, all these major institutions. And, you know, I think what started to shift, I know my perspective, and I would, I would venture to say my siblings as well, who were part of the group, <clears throat> was just seeing how people responded to our performance mm -hmm. and sharing our culture and our heritage. And I was like, man, we really have something amazing here. Um, so I, I tell you that for me was probably the biggest shift in my perception of my Africanness, so to speak, yeah. and appreciation of my heritage and my culture and where I come from. And I think that's where I really started to take a lot more pride in mm -hmm. my last name to start with. You know, now yeah. I wouldn't change it for the world. Absolutely. And I hear what you're saying too, you know, you know, as a young person to be able to get that experience, because, you know, you mentioned you have a 17 year old and I have a 17 year old son as well. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge trying to get him to comprehend, comprehend the richness behind his Caribbean heritage. And, yeah. you know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm going against the wind here. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm being hopeful as I hear you speak, but mm. maybe you would appreciate it as he gets older, you know, appreciate yeah. who he is and, and where he's from. So I'm sure Absolutely. that's going to encourage, you know, a number uh, of our listeners. Um, so as you transitioned out of, you know, you know, being a teenager and, you know, and, and deciding to, to probably launch your business. <laughs> Because mm. we see, you know, the GBK, um, you know, um, uh, that, I, that I've noticed when I've done my research. Um, how, how did that come about? Because I first, let us know what your slogan is, because I thought that was, you know, wisely chosen. And there mm. must be some reason behind that. Tell us some more about the slogan of your business and why you chose to do what you're doing and what impact are you having on you know, on ethnic, you know, ethnicity as the word is becoming more popular now. Because when we were growing up, it wasn't, it wasn't such a nice word that was being used. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I remember going into elevators, moving here and going, oh, I'm a color. I didn't realize that I was a color. Okay. And going into exactly. elevators, people kind of backing away. That was like such a shock factor for me. Yeah. But I think we've almost <laughs> yeah <laughs> to a point where people are understanding that there's value in the differences not everyone mm -hmm. of course but there seem mm -hmm. to be a more of an openness to mm -hmm. understanding the value of differences diversity yep. is such a big word now uh, um, you know we are appreciating our different shades we can now get makeup with different shades i'm probably aging oh. myself because once upon a time that was difficult oh it, no you're not i'm right there with you <laughs> It was bad if you, you know, um, the, the mm -hmm. flexibility of water here. I mean, here is a, we could probably just do a whole chat on here mm -hmm. and how we 
do, you know, how we do her hair, we treat her hair, what not yeah. to touch, what to, it's, you know, it's just a whole thing for someone that may not understand, yeah. but others may do. And I think a, a larger portion of my audience would. Mm. How, where did, did any of this come up, you know, become a part of what it is that you're doing now and what it is that you're trying to achieve and put out there in the world with, with, yeah. with JDK? Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I, I think anyone who has really taken the time to get to know themselves mm -hmm. and understand what their purpose is, understand what they're passionate about, understand what brings them fulfillment. When you're able to tap into that, you are, I think you start automatically uh, gravitating towards work that just feeds your soul in that yes. direction. Um, and so I would definitely say, you know, my heritage, my background, all of that absolutely has so much to do with the work that I do now. So, um, <clears throat> so I like to call myself a transformational brand strategist. Yes. Um, and I love that term. <laughs> ooh, thank you. Thank you. And, you know, I started using that because I realized that the work that I do when I work with my clients, you know, more often than not, I mean, there's some clients who will come and say, look, I just need, you know, a brochure done. Okay, great. You know, no big deal. Um, there's others who, you know, a number of who I'm working with now, there are others who they come to JBK and they really don't know where to start with building their brand and growing it. And their messages are kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. So they really come to us to, I like to say, to tap into the soul of their brand yeah, and then be able to express that um, online and offline in all their communications. Um, so, you know, we believe that stories have the power to transform lives. I've seen it, you know, just with almost every, every client that whether we launch a website or a museum exhibit or, you know, an annual report, yeah. Um, you know, we're professional storytellers who really tap into the soul of our client's brand mm. so that they can have an impact on their community, um, ultimately. So, yes. I, and I would say, you know, we really focus on multicultural marketing and, and, you know, the whole diversity thing that's just become so watered down. <laughs> I tell you, it's just, you know, I mean, that's, that's a buzzword. Yes. Um, but I think so many of us, we're doing diversity before it was the thing to do. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Um, so, so, you know, just as an example, this is one story I, I really uh, like to tell because I think it's just such a powerful, um, you know, example of how stories do have the power to just transform someone. Um, so, um, you know, several years ago, we were hired to do the National Urban League they were celebrating their 100 year anniversary. And so they hired us to build a 4,000 square foot exhibit. And this was in Washington, DC. Um, it was a little crazy. We literally had five months to do it. We did it, <laughs> didn't sleep much, but we did it. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I, I, I did like throughout before we actually even got the project and throughout the entire project and after we launched the exhibit um, because I'm, I'm very much a spiritual person. So I just really prayed more than anything. I mm -hmm. said, you know what? I just said, you know, God, let people see you through the work that we do. Yes. Um, and I remember there was uh, one day where they had the exhibit open. It was like one of the first days. And there was a group of teenagers that were, you know, over in the side. This is at the Washington Convention Center. So it was a huge convention center tens of thousands of people there for this conference. Um, so they had this one group of teenagers and they were all, you know, just kind of standing around. And so we had, pardon? No, I'm just laughing because I can just imagine seeing the number of all these teenagers standing around. Yeah. Standing around, you know, and you know, the typical teenagers fooling around, whatever. Yeah. Um, I think they were with like a, a group or something. And so we had our company exhibit booth right next to this huge exhibit we had just built for um, the centennial. And so there's this young man who came and sat at our company booth. And my business partner was there at the time and she seeks him. And she was like, uh, young man, unless you're planning on working for us, um, you might want to move from there. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, oh, 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 you know, I'm sorry. I mean, he was, he was, you know, fairly respectful, but he was kind of like, mm, you know, um, kind of like that whole teenager thing. You yes. Know? 
And so she was like, she said to him, she said, um, have you gone to see what's in that booth over there? And he was like, no, what is it? She's like, well, I want you to go through there. Um, our company built that. I want you to go through there and come back to this table uh, when you finish going through the booth. Now, imagine there's this young, he was probably 17, 18 years old. Um, this young man who, you know, got this little bit of attitude, like oh, make him do this. But to his credit, he did it. Yeah. So wow. he goes into the exhibit and about 20, maybe 30 minutes later, he comes out. My business partner's sitting there waiting to see what he has to say. And his whole demeanor was completely transformed. It was a different wow. kid that came out. And a big part of that was, I think he was able to see because our mandate with the exhibit was to tell the past, the present and the future of the Urban League and just showcase the um, incredible work that people of color had done for all of us to have so many of these opportunities we have today. I mean, it took you from the, the black migration, you know, mm -hmm. the early 1900s through the civil rights movement, through the Obama, you know, mm -hmm. election, the first one. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, he came out and he goes to my business partner. He's like, wow, you all did that. And she was like, yeah, yep. Our company did that. You know, he's like, that's, that's incredible. So, you know, we've never followed back up with, I would have loved to known what happened to him, but even just knowing how he responded, just in, in, yeah. in seeing and experiencing people who look like him, who had done amazing things, you know, that, that is the, the work we try to do with all of our projects is, you know, make an impact in those communities yes. that our clients serve. Yes. And the story behind each person's brand, I think is also mm -hmm. important as you're saying, to be able yeah. to tell the story because the story speaks louder, Absolutely. you know, I feel instead of, you know, just trying to, you know, have a logo, um, you know, the story speaks much louder. And it's interesting because this is a random person going by that was invited to take a look, right place, right time. And, yeah. you know, that display may have impacted him forever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, wow. that's the hope. That, that, is, that the hope. is fascinating. So how did you how did you decide to do what it is that you're doing? I'm sure there must have been options that you had to weigh and sometimes by accident. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you said you're a spiritual person, so there's no real accident, you know, there, you know, but were you thinking of something else and you were guided into this direction? Mm -hmm. What happened? How, how did yeah. you end up where you are? Yeah, I have to say I'm probably one of the few people I know who mm -hmm. actually has a degree in the field that I'm actually practicing. <laughs> so, and part of that is because I was very clear yeah. um, at a young age about what I wanted to do. So, you know, growing up, I was always writing on something. I was always drawing on something. I mm -hmm. entered tons of art competitions, won several at school. Wow. Um, like art was just, it was just a part of me. I mean, really just, you know, creativity. It mm -hmm. really runs in my family. And that was a big part of, you know, what I really enjoyed. So I remember in um, high school, this was now this is really dating myself. Uh, <laughs> when the first Max came out. <laughs> I hear that you. I'll tell you how long ago that was. <laughs> <laughs> when the first Max came out and um, I had a chance to work on the school newspaper on these new Mac, Max. And I remember thinking, wow, I can combine my love of art with technology. This is crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. It literally was a light bulb moment for me. And that's where I said, okay, I need to figure out what this is. Cause whatever yes. it is, this is what I want to do. So, you know, I did some research on it, found out that, you know, they have something called graphic design and, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, especially in the African the Asian, the Caribbean, the, you know, a lot of these high performing communities, we're expected to be doctors, lawyers, mm -hmm. engineers, you know, accountants, yeah. like those are the respectable um, 
uh, job. Yes. You path. know, for all the struggles of the parents, saving money and making sure that you oh, know you. they give you a better path. Yeah, you know, a good path. <laughs> that, that's that's the belief. That's the belief, and we can't blame them for that. You know, they want they yes. want better for us yes. than and they have. They thought at that time because I, I think for yes. parents now that you know, as you said, you're a parent now. It's the options. I think yeah. the options have opened up a little more, as you're saying, combining art with, you know, the Mac coming out. And, yeah. you know, surprisingly, they would tell you in the past that if you're more art centric, mm. you're not technology centric. Mm. And you've just mm. taken the two things and go, what are you talking about? Bam, here they are together. That's yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's excellent. So you pushed through and you went ahead and, and, and um, combined and made it happen. I did. I did not have some challenges, but, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we, we made it. And I honestly, I wake up every morning, truly, truly just grateful to be doing yeah. work that I love for clients who are truly making an impact in this world like that, that, that absolutely is. feeds my soul. So, so what would you tell, because I'm not sure for, you know, for your industry, you know, even for graphic design, I'm not sure if it's as, you know, diverse as, you know, mm. some other industries. So for example, for, right. for years, I mean, I did hospitality, for example, mm. and hospitality has a large number of minorities there but up to a certain level. Exactly. And if you start looking at the hotel management companies and you look on, you know, the, they show exactly. all the faces, yes. it's, you know, it's very much so not mm -hmm. diversified. You have, you know, even when I was trying to move up into the executive side of things, sometimes I'm the only face yeah. <laughs> that's representing yeah. that yeah. there's a spectrum. There may be one Asian person, um, but, and a lot of times when people ask what I do and I tell them, they wanted to know, oh, do you, you know, especially when I was younger, oh, you work at the front desk or are you in housekeeping right. or are you, you know, the, the, there's certain assumptions. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just curious for, for your industry, yeah. is it, is it, is there more diversity? Um, and if it is or not, I mean, what would you tell a young person that is thinking about this, um, mm -hmm. you know, thinking about going into um, what you do into into graphic design into that combining that art and technology what, what yeah. would your recommendation be yeah yeah so uh, definitely not as diverse as it should be um mm -hmm. i was a member of this organization called the aiga american institute of graphic arts so that's like the largest organization for designers um and anybody who's connected to that industry um it's a global organization they have tens of thousands of members around the world and they, I don't know the last time they did the study, but I know several years ago, they did yeah. a whole research study, especially looking at their membership. And they looked at just that, how diverse was the industry. And if I recall correctly, <laughs> there were 6% Six. of 6% African-Americans, <laughs> people of color, um, who were practicing in the industry. And then I think it was like 3% Latino. Wow. I mean, just it's, you know, and I don't know so how combined, much. Combine, Julian, combining the two, you still mm -hmm. haven't hit double digits. No. Wow. No, not at all. Um, and, you know, I'm sure there's a number of different reasons for that. I will say I am seeing more. I'm not sure how accurate those numbers are now, because I do mm -hmm. feel like I am seeing more people who look like me yes. who are going into the industry. And I think part of it is that people are becoming more educated about the opportunities in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I think also the industry has changed so much that mm -hmm. there are multiple opportunities to get involved in design. There's web design, there's graphic design, there's um, user interfaces. I mean, there's so many ways that you can get into the industry now. Um, and I think I'm seeing more programs as well that are yes. educating youth on these opportunities in the different design disciplines. Um, there's one organization that I'm on the board of called Project Osmosis. And they've been around for over 20 years now. And they go into the inner city of Chicago and they bring out these young black youth and teach them all about the opportunities in mm -hmm. the different design disciplines, graphic design, fashion, architecture, you name it, in those different industries so that they know, wait, this is an opportunity for you. I mean, they've even set up scholarships for these kids. Wow. So they're doing incredible work. 
Um, and there's, you know, a few more organizations like that. Uh, but I'm definitely seeing, I think, more just educating these youth that, you know what, these are opportunities. If you are creatively inclined and this is this something you're really passionate about, here are some, some ways you can get engaged. Yeah, yeah, that is, you know, that is very encouraging because I'm not sure, I guess, similar, <laughs> similar to me as you're mm -hmm. going through, you, you probably walked into a number of rooms or a number of meetings, a number of mm -hmm. gatherings in your industry, and you may just be the only minority in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was usually at least maybe one or two yeah. others. And so but... funny, you kind of find each other. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. I That's see exactly you. it. That's and you know what? We actually had, unfortunately, it's not really as active now, but I was able to find um early in my career, actually, um, there's this organization called Organization of Black Designers. I yes. Like, when I found out about this organization, I said, Oh my gosh, I found my people. Yes, I found my people. Um, and it was just a great community. It was great to connect with other, you know, designers, black designers, just to hear from them, like what they're having challenges with, you know, tips for navigating certain things, mentoring mm -hmm. the next generation. Um, so it's not as active now. They still do some uh, programs, but it was just great being able to connect with other designers. And I'm actually still in touch with a lot of those wow. professionals up to the day. So, you know, a lot of times you just got to find your tribe. Yes. Yeah. Take the initiative to find your yes. tribe. Mm -hmm. Sometimes by accident, you'll find, and um, you know, sometimes someone will seek you out, which, you know, which is so beneficial. Yeah. Um, you know, I would encourage anyone that is trying to find some, you know, going into an industry or doing a, anything in particular, it, whatever industry they choose is to find a mentor. Absolutely. A huge, huge difference if they could. Yeah. Um, so what, um, as far as moving forward, I mean, what do you see, what do you see in the future for for JBK for yourself mm -hmm. you know what what kind of plans are going on I could have sworn I said something that saw something about a book did you not launch Ooh, your book I did so we yeah. have I think I have a copy here so yes yes, we actually, yes. um my sister Christine St. Ville and I we actually launched this book in 2014 wow whose shoes are you wearing 12 steps to uncovering the woman you really want Oh my um, goodness! Congratulations! Thank you. It's it's struggle nation to yes. put to put one of those together, and let me see the thickness of it. Let me see yes. the look at that. Whoa! I'm telling you, <laughs> congratulations! That Thank is a you. huge milestone. So yes. we're supposed to be put an author in everything, in all your tags and everything. You yes. know, officially an author. So yes. tell us, tell us about the book. Tell us how. Um, you know, how people can find it, people can Absolutely. purchase. Um, tell us about the book. Absolutely. So, so as you can see on the cover, it has, you know, it, it, demonstrates, it showcases our African heritage, mm -hmm. African print skirts. Um, and the reason we, we authored this book, I think was, you know, both of us had gone through a lot of life transitions, a lot of changes, a lot of growth. Um, yes. And especially from a cultural perspective and a Christian perspective, like mm -hmm. looking at the struggles that, you know, women go through, we're like, well, can we put something together that's going to help other women, you know, navigate a lot of the same situations we did and just come out better and stronger and wiser? Um, I mean, not to say we don't still have growing to do. We absolutely oh, of course. do. Yes. Um, <laughs> But, you know, uh, we just felt very strongly that, you know, uh, it, it was it was a responsibility, actually, to put this information out there. So, <laughs> you know, the, the story is going to change depending on which one of us you talk to. But um, I approached my sister and I said, so, so Chrissy, you know, um, what do you think about writing a book? And in her mind, for some reason, she heard ebook. <laughs> never said anything about an ebook but that's what she says she heard um so it was definitely a process but I think the thing that and we we actually wrote that book in six months um no was it really oh it might have been six weeks <laughs> I think I think we wrote it in six weeks I think we were pushing each other really hard to get it done oh my um, goodness but but the thing is, part of what helped us was that we were both bloggers. Like we both wrote blog, you know, blogs pretty regularly. So we kind of equated each chapter to like two blog posts. We're like, okay, yes. we can do that. Um, but um, you know, I remember during the process of of writing the book, 
um, you know, we had to keep kind of pushing each other. And there were some things that were difficult to write about, but, you know, we had to keep reminding each other, you know what, this, this is not about us. This is about all of those women and men, because we've had a lot of men read the book who've given us some incredible feedback, mm -hmm. um, who are going to be helped in some way by these words that we put on paper. So, so what would someone take away? What would be the big takeaway or, you know, the hope that someone will take away after they've read this book? Yeah. Oh, I think the biggest message we really want to get across with that, that book, you know, um, whose shoes are you wearing? It's really questioning kind of what I mentioned in the very beginning about really knowing who you are. Mm -hmm. I think so many of us are wearing not necessarily physical masks, although those two, yes. but we are wearing these, um, just these masks and they're keeping people from seeing who we really are and they're mm -hmm. keeping us from being who we mm -hmm. really are. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is just influenced by, you know, circumstances or situations we have experienced growing up, you know, other people's influences, what the world and society expects of you, you know, what people in your life expect of you. And I think so many people are going through life, yes. living life for other people, yes. as opposed to getting really clear about who they are, what they want and what their purpose is. So the mm -hmm. book is really about helping women uncover their purpose. Yes, yes. I, I, I thought I was in church there for a minute. Um. <laughs> No, that's you know, like, interesting because our pastor actually, we when we the, the book first came out, yes. we gave him uh he actually bought 20 copies from us because we gave him a copy and he thought it was so powerful. He ordered 20 copies to give to people who came to him for counseling. So that was that was just such a powerful testimony. And the funny thing is I actually wrote about him in the book. So that oh, that's good. But <laughs> that's, well, that's yes and no. <laughs> No, but that, I, I think, um, especially for, for people of color, I mean, mm -hmm. especially for, you know, first or second generation migrants, you know, you come yeah. in and you have to put on a certain facade That's it. That's it. You know, or you feel that you have to, but, you know, let me change it. You have to put on a certain facade sometimes to be able to get in the door yep. Yep. for certain things um exactly and it. you know even from where we come from i, I remember mm -hmm. um even um you know growing up and 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 gone back to 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 visit um you know the caribbean there's certain rules that we have created mm -hmm. that are very european centric you yes. know um and it, it's it's funny i remember we we're in braids for the first time to work and i was in the hotel industry i'd gone back mm. to to um you know to to just contribute back after i've been educated mm -hmm. and it was like a big thing mm -hmm. oh you're here braiding is not uh Can you imagine and it was you know it was it was so fascinating and we would wear you know um pantyhose mm -hmm. in the heat <laughs> mm -hmm. very yep um, so, yeah. you know, you come into an, another environment that you are expected to put on a certain mask in order yeah. to, to, to survive. And then you end up forgetting the true nature of who you are. And okay. if we are lucky and we have gotten to a certain place and a certain level of maturity, then we mm -hmm. start going, mm -mm, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> That's it. That's Sometimes it. it's a season too, you know, where Absolutely. you're getting more exposed to what is, to who you are and, and, yes. and who you have become to be able to go, okay, enough with this, you mm -hmm. know, this is, this is me. Yes. My hair it leave it. every day of the week, but that is just me. That's What's in it. the head is still getting your work done. Yes. You know, That's it's just it. so interesting. Yeah. Um, and really to your point, we actually, our very last chapter in the book is called what culture got to do with it that speaks just to that, because that really was, again, we wrote this book from a very cultural context. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the funny thing is when the book came out, we had people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all ethnicities, women from all ethnicities telling us how they could relate to yes. so many of the things that we wrote about wow. in, in our book. So I think that also just drove from the fact that, you know what, it's a universal struggle figuring out who you are and just walking in your own shoes. It yes. really is. Yes. If you're ever planning to do a book talk, a book chat, a read through discussion about this book, yes. <laughs> definitely invite me. Okay. And... <laughs> 
<laughs> will do, will do. Yes, would love to be able to converse further on that because I think it is, I think it's 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 vital and I think it's mm -hmm. gonna create that stamp. Um, and you know, I, I, I'm always impressed with, with anyone that has put a book together that will help and support others because it's there for life and it's in print mm -hmm. and it took time and energy and personal sacrifice and some, I guess, emotional processes too. Absolutely. To put that in print. So congratulations to you and your Thank sister, you. you know, thumbs up. Absolutely. Mm. So what else is happening with you, Julian? What else is coming down the pipeline, either, you know, with your business or with any personal goals that you have set? What should we expect from you? Oh, gosh. Well, I would say pretty much anything, almost everything that comes from me is going to have something to do with culture and empowering our people mm. and, of course, branding. Yes, of course. <laughs> um, and, and just, you know, transforming lives through um, professional storytelling. So, um, you know, working on a number of really amazing projects, I, I feel truly just fortunate to be working on uh, projects and with clients who are aligned with my purpose and mm -hmm. and i and i just want to drive home the point that you know this is part of why it's so important to really get to know who you are what you want and what your purpose is because yes. when you get real clear about that um it's all about energy you start attracting you like they say your vibe attracts your tribe mm. you know and i have I'm seen sorry, that. Say that again <laughs> oh absolutely your vibe attracts your tribe wow it really does, you know, and, and it's all about the energy that you put out. It's all about the thoughts. You know, I, I yeah. tell my daughter all the time, thoughts become words, become mm. actions, become your life. Yes. So you have to be so mindful about what you're putting out there and, you know, be really intentional about the type of work that you really want to do. So I feel like, you know, the more intentional I got, um, and the more I really focused on, you know, doing work that matters, the more of those clients that just started, you know, coming my way. So we have one client um, we're working with. She's pretty high profile um, and we are getting ready to rebrand all of, she has a, a bath and body line mm. and the bath and body line is all about energy, about uplifting your energy, about raising your vibe, about being yes. intentional, yes. you know, um, and so we're in the process right now of redesigning, rebranding her entire line of products and getting ready for, I think, what's going to be a pretty amazing holiday launch. So very wow. excited about that. Yes, very it does sound that. exciting. Yeah, it yeah, is. yeah. So, So who would your ideal client be? So, you know, I would say first and foremost, purpose-driven, mm -hmm. um, you know, really working with clients who um are all about making a difference uh and that could be you know more often than not it ends up being uh really high profile professional black women um and men uh we have one husband and wife team that we're working with right now who is just changing the entire um just perception and the service delivery of healthcare, mental health and social services for African-Americans um, and to help them bring them out of poverty. Mm. So, you know, that kind of thing, I'm like, oh, let's go. You know, I get excited yeah, about that. I mean, know? I'm thinking of that because even from a mental health perspective, yes. just, just looking at that, I, I find that sometimes it keeps you in a certain place in yes. the, even from a poverty perspective. Yes. The, the, it, it's, it's, um, it's such a, it's such a powerful force. And I think that's the reason why a lot of times people are, and even, you know, a lot of times people that are, that are minorities are manipulated by the system yeah. because of a lot of history, a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of mental, um, challenges that have, they've gone that's through it. and even the generational yeah. challenge, it, there's just so much around yeah. it. And I find uh, having moved here when I was a teenager, you know, going to, to university, it, it's like I had to start to learn this culture and how you're yes. seeing, yes. Um, how you're being seen mm -hmm. compared to um, being seen differently Mm -hmm. where you grew up mm -hmm. and it was so interesting because I'm thinking if I didn't necessarily have the foundation of what I had from the Caribbean mm -hmm. I was born in this environment what would 
what but what, what trajectory would I have gone on? Yeah. And it doesn't mean that it's necessarily negative all the time. There are a lot of you know, there, there, there are a lot of, um, you know, African-Americans that are born here that have yeah. done so much, yeah. but I feel sometimes we, we break things up, you know, we're all, yeah. we're all minorities, we're all black, but, yeah. oh, you're from Africa, oh, you're Caribbean black, oh, you're, yep. and you're, you're separated, and I, I, I think that creates even further gap in being able to get to that goal of, of you know, of equality, Absolutely. Um, so it's, it's interesting how dividing and conquer <laughs> is really a truth. Um, it is. You know? <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. Yes. So yeah. excellent. So, um, so for anyone that is trying to, um, and and it's, it seems as if you work mainly with minorities. Yeah. That- so we do. Um, we also work with major corporations. Um, we have one major um, electric conglomerate <laughs> that we're working mm-hmm. with right now, and we're working with their diversity and inclusion um department that's a new thing now too i'm hearing more of that in the past maybe two two years yeah Yeah, they're they're you know this particular one they've actually been they've they've had this department and they're really committed from what Mm -hmm. i've seen to actually spending their supplier diversity dollars with minority owned businesses so it's great when you see that um so we're working with them to with that department to put out their annual report and really showcase and tell the story of how they are empowering minority suppliers. Um, so, you know, we, we work with, you know, um, minority owned businesses, as well as these major corporations and organizations who are really looking to tap into that multicultural market and tell their story in a way that connects with that audience. Mm-hmm. Very, very good. Yes, yes. And that's, you explained that so well. Um, so if you were to look back at yourself, Julian, and talk to your 12 year old self. I remember mm. I think you had said when you, you know, you were younger, you didn't necessarily appreciate yeah. all of who you are. And it's so funny because it's, it's a complete full circle because you're actually doing, <laughs> you're in that field, yeah. in that area of what you were pushing away that you, you know, wanted to be someone else. What would you say to your 12 year old self? Mm. Gosh, what a powerful question. I'll tell you, I mean, just to be really transparent, when I have looked at my journey now and I look back at all the different versions of myself I had to grow through to get yes. here, I have definitely shed a lot of tears for, you know, that 12-year-old or that 30-year-old yes. or, you know, who's just who just didn't know any better, you know. Um, but I tell you, Woo, thank God for my, you know, my faith, because, you know, a lot of times that's really what, what brought me through a lot of these really challenging mm-hmm. um, times, you know, I, I think it's, it's, I would definitely tell my 12 year old self, because one thing I didn't really learn until I was much older was how powerful our thoughts and our words are. Oh, that huge. when I started realizing that, it was a game changer for mm-hmm. me. And there's some things that I did just instinctively, like when I put my mind to something, I was like, oh, I'm gonna, it wasn't even like second guessing whether or not I could do that. It was just yes. an automatic thing like, okay, well, I'm gonna achieve that and I'm gonna do that. And, I'm, and you know, a lot of those things that I put my mind to, I did. Um, and I think that was just more of my spiritual GPS yeah. guiding me in that direction. Yeah. Um, but then I also feel like the older you get, and the more mature you become in your walk, in your spiritual walk, um, you know, the more you have to learn. Mm-hmm. And, you know, every level requires a new version of you. Yes. So, you know, I would tell her, you know, pay attention to your thoughts and your words. They truly have power. Be very intentional with what comes out of your mouth because mm-hmm. words have creative power. Mm-hmm. And just know, and it, it always does, this too shall pass. You yes. know, I mean, it, ah. it seems very cliche, but, mm-hmm. you know, so many times in our lives, we go through things thinking, oh my gosh, it's the end of the this world. Is- Oh. You know, like it's all <laughs> over and then you come through it. You're like, man, I look back on everything I've been through and I wouldn't change anything because mm-hmm. I wouldn't be the person who I am today had I not gone through that. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I know. Usually when we were, you know, if we're having, um, you know, a, a devotion and actually we're going through that, um, you know, the, the mind and, and, and you yeah. know, the weight that you carry. 
Um, but it's when you're going through it, it is difficult. You don't yeah. want to. And uh, then you get to the other side and you go, oh my goodness. Yeah. Thank goodness I went through that yes. because it created, you know, this the strength or this yes. understanding that I yes. needed. Because you look back, you know, 20 years, you're like, I am a completely different person. Completely. Or even if you're not completely different, okay, I have more self-control because I have more understanding and I have yeah. more knowledge and I can know how to respond accordingly. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a powerful place to be. And I'm so it glad is. that you that you brought that up because the the mind and speaking and I say that to my son sometimes because I will get upset with him he's like why are you getting upset with me when he says something about himself that yeah. is negative and I yeah. was like mm -mm, no those yeah. words are yeah. very powerful. powerful you have to be careful now just imagine how much power those words have if you speak in a positive light in the other direction right? yes. and, you know yep. these things as you say you you wish you had known when you were younger um, and I really love the point that you said, once you know, it's a game changer. And, and that's what I try to, to, to tell people that I, that I, you know, that I support or, or help that once you know, because you can see the lie in your head sometimes coming. Absolutely. And if you've gone through, you know, and you're preparing yourself, you'll see yep. it, you look at yep. it and you go, I see you, you're a lie. Thank you very much. Let's move that's on. That's Versus that's back years ago, you're like, Oh my God, and you know. Yeah. Crazy. You know, one trick that I, I started using for that, which has worked really well for me. I know, you know, yes. everything works differently for other people, but literally as soon as I start getting a negative thought, I immediately replace it with what I actually desire. Yes. Immediately, and it's become such a habit. Yeah. Um, but it's one of those things that. You know, when you're changing your mindset, it yes. is work. It is it work. Is work. Yes, I really right. love that though, because sometimes you try to push things out, but it's like your mind needs something to it be, does. you know, to hold on to. So instead of just removing it and it just placing whatever it wants in there, yeah. removing it and put what it is that you want. That's it. If you want to achieve what you want to see. I love how yeah. you put that. I hope that's in the book. <laughs> mm, probably in there somewhere. I hope so. If not, then of course, book number two. Top, to top, I'm about to say, top of the next book, right? Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah. It's been such a wonderful conversation. And my last question for you yeah. is what, what kind of stamp do you want to leave on the world? I know that you've started, you've mentioned your goals for the future. You have your book in place. You, you really want to have an impact. And I'm just curious, what, what's the you know, as you're saying, speak in, speaking things into being yes. at the end of the day, what kind yeah. of legacy, what kind of impact do you want to leave on the world? Yeah, I, I think that the, the most important thing for me is knowing that I lived like fully all the mm -hmm. way out. You know, there's this great quote by Dr. Wayne Dyer, where he says, don't die with your music still in you. Oh. And I said, that yeah. is powerful. And I think so many people, that's what they end up doing. You know, I think a lot of times we get caught up in our minds by what we think we don't have, what we think mm -hmm. we don't know, what we think we're not capable of. We don't even try, even though we have every single gift, talent, you know, whatever we need to actually make a go, whatever that thing is. But we, again, it goes back to the whole, you know, negative talk. And so I would say, you know, definitely not dying with my music still in me and just knowing that the work that I did and everything that I leave behind, that it made a difference in somebody's life. And for whatever reason, for whatever I did, that somebody's life was made better. And that is a wonderful, wonderful statement mm -hmm. to end on. It was such a pleasure having you, you on. I feel like I need to talk to you whenever, you know, when you go into that valley, you have the yes. hills in the valley and you go into the valley and you need to converse with yep. someone to go, remember, yes. this is what you need. And I think that's what the book provides as well. Yeah. Um, so Absolutely. thank you so much, Julian, for joining us in the circle. And um, what are the handles? Where, where can people find you? Absolutely. Um, so with the book, you can find it on Amazon. And I think we have five stars on Amazon. Um, and it's on Amazon, it's on Barnes and Noble. You can also, if you want a signed copy, you can go to our website at whoshoesbook.com. 
whoseshoesbook.com. That's W-H-O-S-E, whoseshoesbook.com. Um, and then for my branding and marketing um, agency, for anyone who's really looking to tap into the multicultural market and tell your story in a way that engages and connects with your audience, um, you can find us at JBK Brand Design. Yes dot com and we are at jbk brand design everywhere yes and of course all those handles would be um posted with the details for the podcast so you'll be able to take a look at it just so my audience know and they can be able to just go ahead and click on them easily thank you so much again julian such a oh, wonderful pleasure, pleasure being able to connect with you and wishing you all the very best with all your plans thank and you. goals in the future thank you so much